What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be doing a sort of a revisit of a previous video I did. Um, I've been getting a few questions about things and I just figured it'd be good to revisit some videos that I've done year, two years ago, whatever the case is, for people maybe picking up this game that aren't gonna be picking up Madden 23 or Madden 24. So today we're gonna be doing a franchise guide for those of you who are newer to the game maybe just playing it for the first time and are not sure what to do, but you really want to get into a franchise. So I'm going to walk you through the steps. We're going to go through a whole season. I'm going to explain everything to you guys. And then hopefully at the end, you guys are fully prepared to take on your own franchise. If this video ends up helping you out, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like at the bottom and, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about the video. Let me know what else you guys want to know about the game and Madden 25 as a whole. And without further ado, let's get started. So obviously first we're going to go and click on franchise. And that's going to bring us here. If you have any save files, you know, you'll, they'll be here. Otherwise, click on create new league and your first decision, play offline solo or play online solo or multiplayer. So you have the ability to play online, which means it doesn't save at your local station. You cannot save the progress whenever you want. And it just saves as you go. This usually ends up being a little bit quicker for advancing and different types of things within the franchise file. But you are at the mercy of servers and any kind of issues that could arise from that. Now, a couple years ago, we had an issue where the servers really messed up <laughs> really bad and a lot of people lost their franchises. Now, I don't think that would be something that would happen again, but if you are concerned about that, you have the option to playing offline. This would mean that you cannot join this or have your friends join this or, you know, do anything of that nature, but it will save you the hassle of worrying about the servers and something happening with them. So this is completely your decision. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna go offline just so that way if I need to save and come back to this, I can. Before we get to starting the franchise though, if you do click on the online portion, it's gonna ask if you wanna use your current roster file or load one up that you have you know, saved under your rosters. If you are looking to use a particular roster, make sure it's loaded up on the main screen before you get here and then it will pull it in from the roster on the main screen. You can also choose to use the weekly NFL roster. This is something they took away for a couple of years, but it is now back, which means you can choose to start your season from any week in the season to have realistic statistics or realistic records. Just know that anytime you start one with this week, typically in the past, it would always end up with the same exact draft class. So if you start one in week 10, and then you start a different franchise and you also do week 10, you'll probably start with the same draft class. That might be something good or something bad, depending on your own personal you know, opinions. I like this feature sometimes, especially if I'm starting a fresh one at the end of the season. You know, like when you really wanna just like get to Madden 26 early and you wanna rebuild your team from the ground up after the season has already taken place, I will usually start from the end of the season. So that way everything is familiar with the actual NFL schedule. But like I said, for this instance, we're going to go offline because none of that right now is really important for what we're going to be doing. And I, I'm just going to use the week one roster ratings and all that stuff really does not matter when it comes to what I'm about to show you guys today. And then you're going to come to this screen and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. You just choose a team that you want. Of course, I'm going to go with my Vikings. And then when you come here, there's a few different options. You can start playing in the preseason, but you can also change your starting point down here now don't click here unless you're ready to start it doesn't say uh, i don't know why it's just the way it's worded makes me feel like it's this is where you can change something but this is where you start the franchise up here so if you don't want to start in the preseason let's say if you want to start in the regular season or if you want to do a fantasy draft this is where you choose that here you can also change your role from coach to owner yes there's no more player availability um in franchise not sure why they took that out but it is not available anymore one thing to know, if you decide to go with owner, you are not going to get all of the scenario based stuff. You're not going to get the breakout scenarios. That is all stuff that is listed under the coach. So if you're looking to have that stuff, you have to choose coach. And once you do decide if you want to go with the coach, you can create a coach or you can just use the current active coach. If you do owner, it's going to ask you just to create an owner. It's you're not you don't get to play as the actual NFL owner. Those guys are not in the game. If you click on create a coach, you're going to be brought to a staff builder or team builder. Essentially, this just gives you a little head start in one of the categories in the coaching tree for talents. And I'll show you guys that in a little bit here. So this first one, staff builder, the backstory gives you the first talent in the, first, in the head coach staff modifications talent tree. This backstory gives you the first talent in the head coach player growth talent. So this one will give you a head start on discounts for purchasing uh, staff modifications. And this one 
And this one will give you extra start to the progression side of things. There's a couple different trees. And like I said, we will go into that a little bit more detailed in a few minutes. If you don't want to change any of that, you'll just use the coach that's already there. You will take on whatever they have as their talent tree already along with their coordinators. League settings are very important, especially with how Madden works. You want to make sure that these are set up properly and that you're avoiding any type of issues with the game. This stuff is all up to you guys. I have my own priorities when it comes to setting the difficulty and the orders and the length of the runoff clock and all that stuff. This is all comes down to what you would prefer. If you want to know more about that kind of thing, I do have a video out about the sliders that I have been using. There will probably be an update coming in the next couple of weeks, but for now, check that video out if you are interested in seeing what I'm doing, but I also only play CPU versus CPU. So if you are looking for a user for a CPU, my settings are not gonna definitely work for what you're looking to do. Accelerated clock, this just helps the clock run down faster. If you do not have this on and you have quarter length to 15 minutes, your stats are gonna be so inflated and you're gonna get sick of the game. Like, <laughs> it's a long game, man. It's it's legitimately like a two hour, three hour game and it is, it is intense. So don't do that unless you are really, really looking for having double or triple the stats of the rest of the league because the simulation does not keep up with that kind of a length. So normally I have it set here. You want to set somewhere between 20 and I would say 13 is a good number, depending on how long you want the games to last. Offensive play cooldowns. This tells you how many play, how many times a play can be called. So like halfback dive out of I form, let's just say. This is where you set it here. If you want to have a cooldown, so if you want to say, hey, you can call this play again, but I need you to run at least, I don't know, five plays before you you can call it again. This is where you set it. So the cooldown, how long in between the plays can be called, limit how many of those plays how many times that play can be called in a given game if you're going to mess with these i would suggest like what i usually do is i'll do eight and then four that way there is a, a pretty lengthy cooldown in between the play calling on offense and then there's not you can't just spam a play as well defensively i tend to do this reverse where the cooldown will be four and the limit will be eight this is my personal preference because defense does not have as, as many options as the offensive playbooks do. They just, they don't have as many formations. They don't have as many types of defense that can be called. And sometimes if you lower this too much, you can put yourself in a really bad uh, situation when it comes down to maybe you need a nickel and you need a cover three, but you already used it. So now guess what? You can't run it. And that's just something you don't want to get into. So if you're not comfortable, just don't mess with these. If you do something like this usually works well for me. Dynamic momentum, home field advantage. There's a little meter at the top that goes back and forth depending on what's going on with the game. I despise it. I think it's un completely unrealistic. The things that you get as bonuses are unrealistic and I think it ruins the game. Now, some can argue that even if I turning it off, it's still somewhere there in the background, which I do believe myself, but I don't care. I turn it off every time. If you want to keep it on, by all means, go for it. It's just to me, I don't think that it's very helpful or realistic in terms of immersion. The team settings area is very important. This is going to come default on full control, except for managed practice reps. And you're going to want to turn those to manual because you want to be the one to handle that. The CPU will mess it up. If you don't want to do certain things, like if you don't want to do, I don't know, injury management, you can just turn it to auto. Um, it feel, you know, just set it to how you like. Auto progress players, auto progress talents. I always turn all this stuff off. Um, I, I want to be able to control how my players upgrade and progress. I don't want to have the CPU decide that for me. I believe if you have it set to on, they're just going to default to the current. Um, I think they default to the current scheme fit, I, I believe. Or actually, no, I think they default to the very top one. So whatever their highest one is. Yeah, I've seen that before. But even if it's not a scheme fit, they'll just keep pounding away at like power instead of agile for alignment. So that's why I really don't like having it turned on because I just can't trust a CPU with some things. Commissioner settings. I mean, this is just like your trade deadline stuff, your difficulty, your salary cap. Um, you can turn your salary cap off if you want. If you want to just have fun and just go crazy, just know that you can never turn it back on and things will get pretty hectic when it comes to the teams that you're playing against. But if that's something that you know floats your boat, by all means, go ahead and turn it off. Um, Trade difficulty, if you want to have any type of realistic situations, you want to turn this up to very hard. It's This game just does not know how to handle trades properly. You can get so many players by cheesing the system if you don't have it set to very hard. And you still can, even on very hard. It's just not as easy. 
what I like to do to try to keep things more realistic is I use a, a trade calculator that I've used before in different leagues that I was in with other people and just go off of that. If it looks unfair, like if I'm just, if I'm getting hosed or if, if I'm taking advantage of another team, I just won't put the trade through. If it looks fair, I usually say within like 200 points. And if you look at it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It'll give you a score and it'll tell you how many points it favors one other team or the other. I usually go within 200 because I know there's some type of variable there depending on the trade. And sometimes it still won't even be accepted. Once in a while, the system will actually act as its own calculator and do it properly. But just if, again, it's personal preference. If that's not something that you care to do, don't worry about it. But if you're looking for that immersion, change it to very hard. Consider yourself getting a calculator. I will put the calculator in the description below if you want to tr check it out and use it yourself. It's pretty simple to use and it comes in handy quite a bit. Free agent motivation impact. This will decide how players respond to signing, re-signing with you. I like the idea that it has, but it doesn't always make sense. That you'll have players that will stay close to home, even though they've played for this franchise for eight years, and they'll just completely refuse to re-sign with you because of it, without overpaying them abundantly, which is not good for you in the long term. They'll also have players that don't like cold weather, even though they're from cold weather. And it, it's just some of the things that are set to players just do not make sense and it can be frustrating. So this is another one of those personal preferences here. If you want extra difficulty, turn this up to high or very high. If you don't want them to be a factor, you can turn it down to low or even just turn it off altogether. I prefer keeping it at high or normal, not going too far away from it, because I do like the idea of players making decisions for themselves. I just sometimes it gets a little bit too extra. So um, practice squad stealing on or off. If you want your practice squad to be able to be stolen from another team, you can turn this, you can leave it on. They did fix it a couple of years ago, maybe last year. As soon as week two hit, your entire practice squad was just gone. They would just steal them all. It was crazy. And I ended up turning it off, but now I've had it on and I haven't noticed it. I mean, once in a while, if you have a good player on your practice squad, they will get, they'll get poached and they, as they should. That's the risk of using the practice squad. So you can turn it on now. You can use it without feeling that everything is going to just go wonky. Uh, relocation settings. If you want to be able to relocate your team, you can go, you can, you know, make a choice here. You can do users only everyone. So if you want teams to randomly decide to relocate, it doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. Um, you can disable it altogether. Staff talent cost modifier. This is going to be how much it costs you to upgrade your coaching staff when it comes to their talents. I like to keep this as fast or, or I, I like to keep this as slow or slower or something along those lines because the points can come in very quickly. If you don't want to worry about that and you just want to max your coaching tree out, by all means, go ahead and turn it to fast. Injury, practice injury, pre-existing. Um, the one here to worry about is progressive fatigue. I still do not believe they fixed this in this game. I have noticed on a few occasions that players will be gone from the game for quite some time and they will just never come back the cpu team still seem to not be able to handle this well and later on towards the end of the season they're all fatigued all the time and even if you can't tell that they're fatigued by looking at them on the field you can tell by how your team is playing it'll just seem like your team is light years ahead of them even when you know they're not so i would recommend turning this off but that's up to you of course with your own franchise to make and i will say however if you're looking to have it turned off but still manage practice reps I would leave it on for now and then turn it off once you get in and you set your practice reps and I'll explain that as well later once we get into the franchise file. Storylines you want turned on. These are sort of stale and predictable and sometimes weird, but if you want to have some type of immersion within the franchise file, you'll want to have these on. Draft presentation turned to full. If you don't want to go through all the, the extra stuff, which honestly at this point, I really don't even like to because it's it's sort of a pain to have to skip through the, the little repetitive walk out onto the stage you can just turn it to limited or none uh draft timer if you want this on or off of course you can always just pause when you get to the draft and it does the same exact thing so you don't necessarily have to turn this off right now if you don't want to your fantasy draft order if you are doing a fantasy draft standard is going to be what you see in an nfl draft you know one through 32 pick and then one through 32 pick again snake is going to be one through 32 and then 32 through one so depending on how you want to handle that set for that accordingly Free agent negotiations on stage one. There are different stages in free agency. There have been for a year or two now, but again, some of you guys might be picking up this game for the first time, so you might not have any idea what this means. You can offer up to five contracts in the first stage of free agency. 
you can offer up to 10 contracts in the second stage and then unlimited in the last stage if you want to have more available to you in the first stage you just got to change this here you have 5 10 unlimited or one <laughs> very random numbers and then same with the stage two if you want to have it unlimited that's really the only other option is 10 or unlimited coach firing i generally keep the cpu only i've actually started turning it off altogether this year the reason for this is the cpu just fires everybody like swear to god they will fire a coach that was just hired even though you think they probably could be a good fit and if you have it set to on if you get fired the, the game does not know how to offer you other positions so if you get fired you're pretty much just a lot of the times dead in the water i've had that happen on a few occasions when i did testing i would just either turn this off altogether or leave it to cpu only career clock turned on so this will come into play when it comes to players like saying you know i think this might be my last year or whatever or you know i just don't think this is a good fit i think i'm gonna retire if you don't want this stuff to happen go ahead and turn this off but if if you do want it on of course leave it on breakout scenarios of course leave on development trait regression you want to turn this on as well this will help make sure that older players and regressing players will lose their superstar and x-factor stuff and go down to star and normal accordingly and this is where you set how many of those you want in your league how many x-factors do you want how many superstars and how many star players superstar abilities on or off this is a really big question for a lot of people i right now i'm not having them on because cpu play just does not seem to be it doesn't seem to work as well with cpu play i i may consider turning it on i don't know yet right now i have them off essentially what this does is when a player has superstar x-factor development that will give them special abilities on the field and some of those are a little overpowered some of them are broken some of them don't really help at all and if you want to have them you can turn them on it just it's it's a, it's up to you if you turn them off they will still get the development from their their development rate it won't affect that they just will not have the extra abilities when you go to the games and then roster protection i generally set this to 48 it still doesn't help the cpu the cpu is just broken when it comes to what they do on their rosters they'll have 10 receivers and then they'll have three corners and eight defensive tackles i don't know how they messed this coding up so bad it used to not be like this so they used to just keep the very bare minimum and it worked but now it's just it's such a cluster that i just i usually turn it to 48 but really no matter what you do it's not going to help the the teams just don't know how to handle their own signings properly and this is for people who are running in leagues with other players if you want to set like how many times an in-season player movement can happen or if you want to set you know the overall cut restrictions to not let some a-hole that you don't really trust to ruin a team before you kick them out that kind of thing and then phil ross you want to make sure this is off if you have this on anytime you sign a free agent it's going to automatically cut a random player without talking to you about it without checking with you first so turn this off and then once you sign a player if you're over the 53 man limit it will tell you at the front screen like hey you have to cut somebody and then you can make your own decision and that's going to bring you to the first preseason game or i mean if you start in the regular season of course it'll give you the first regular season game i very much recommend doing training camp if you're not aware with what training camp is it is going to give you all of these different things that you can do and every time you do them with a player you choose whoever you want to do it with and if you look here at the the rewards area it's going to tell you what you get out of these things so if you get gold you will get a skill position point so which means an upgrade you'll get one upgrade for that player that you do the drill with so i always recommend doing all of these it also will give you rookie snaps so if you have rookies on your team that are hidden developments you don't know what they are yet you can get 200 snaps towards it so that way you can get them unlocked quicker to know what kind of developments you're going to have working with them you also get some extra xp for doing it some drills pay a little bit more than others for the most part though it's either 2500 xp or 2000 xp for the gold i always go through all of this and i get all my players upgrades before heading into the season because who wouldn't want more development on their team but use this as you will if you don't want to some of these are a little bit harder than others so be prepared to get upset and um, rage a little bit at how ridiculous the CPU is in this situation. If you want to cheese the system, you can always put players out of position into their starting positions that you're going against and hopefully make it a little bit easier, but it still is is pretty crazy to try to do. I've, I have lost my mind a couple of times trying to do like pocket protector to some degree, the DB battle, the chase and tackle, like this one is pretty simple. You put a punter here, they're gonna fumble every time and then you usually don't have to do anything, but DB battle, it, that that is 
that is a whole different story. You do have additional games that you can do, but you don't see those unless you're doing weekly strategy. Your weekly strategy is something you're gonna get every week, and that allows you to make decisions on how to handle this upcoming week opponent. That'll give you a little bit of information on them. Raiders offense, they're in the top right of the screen. It'll give you their play call tendencies. It'll give you their top player out of that situation. And this is also where you handle your practice reps. So very important. If you do not touch your, your practice reps, it's gonna default it to full pad starters, which means that your starters are gonna get the majority of XP from practice every week, and your backups are going to get a minimal amount of it. So if you do not want that, I would recommend just changing all these to split. Or if you have starters at certain positions that you really don't need any experience for, you can change it to backup so that the backups get more time and they get more XP as a result. This also comes into play when at your progressive fatigue, your players are going to be, all, like if you decide to keep progressive fatigue on, this is something you have to pay attention to because throughout the season, that 100% you see there at the top is going to go, to go down. Depending on when your games are, if you have an early game, a late game, a bye week, you'll get scenarios for it, which are not fun. But if you turn this off, like if you turn progressive fatigue off, you're not gonna get to change this. It's going to default set to full pad starters. It will also keep whatever you set it to. So if I have full pad split and I turn it off, it'll keep full pad split for the remainder of the season until I turn it back on, readjust it, turn it back off. So that is how you can sort of manage things a little bit better for your situation. And if you are looking at, you know, week nine, week 10, you realize that you have like 90% fatigue and you really need to get players a little bit more rested, switch it down to half pads. You won't get as much XP, but they will gain a lot of their stamina back. Usually you have to do this for a week or two once in a while to get their stamina back up to where it should be. And then you can go back to full pads again. It really starts to take a big hit out of players at around week 12 or week 13. So if you're anticipating it or trying to anticipate it, Make sure you change to half pads around 12 or 13, so that way you can try to avoid the big drop of like 10 stamina. It's it's It can make your game feel really weird and it can make your players play bad. So this is an important thing to pay attention to throughout the season. What I'll usually do is I'll just turn it, I'll, I'll turn my practice reps to where I want them to be and then I'll go into the settings and I'll turn them off and then it'll be fine from there. You'll still get to choose like what you're focusing on each week and you'll still get the XP for it. So these here, tell you what you want to defend against up front. The only thing to, to keep in mind is that on defense, especially you're not getting this boost when you are playing against a deep pass in this scenario, like defend deep pass here. If they call a run play, but your defense calls a deep pass counter, that is when you're going to get the boost. You're only going to get the boost to the particular defensive type that they deem deep pass worthy. So for instance, if you are running prevent defense, right? Obviously prevent defense is supposed to stop deep pass. That's when you'll get the, the boost for it is something like deep, like to prevent defense or three man deep, or, you know, maybe some type of cover three variation. If you're trying to get a boost in like cover two or, or something like that, you're not gonna wanna go deep pass and it's not gonna matter if they call deep pass or not. So keep that in mind when you are making these decisions, they are not giving you the boost on defense when the offense calls the play that they are anticipating. Like the game doesn't register that, oh, well, this play has started and now it seems to be medium pass. So we're gonna all of a sudden give them the boost. No, it's based off of the, the coverage or the formation that you are calling on the play, no matter what the offense is doing. Offense is a little bit better. This one is the same thing, but you're obviously calling the play. So if you're calling a run play and you have run inside turned on, you're gonna have that boost for your inside run blocking. So that one's a little bit better. It's just the defense that's a little bit wonky. They didn't really work that right. I don't even think they can work that right because there's not really a way for the defense to just automatically know and just decide to play better, you know? And then when you get to the end of it, you can choose your weekly game plan goals. This is where you're gonna earn your staff points from, and they are important. So make sure that you choose these wisely. Don't go too crazy with them and say, oh, I want to have five rushing touchdowns so I can get 10 points. If you don't get them, you don't get them. Sometimes it's better to take the easier ones to make sure you're getting points out of it. And you have one for weekly game plan, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, and head coach. So you can go through and choose the one you want. You'll see some of them have tiers where like for 450 offensive yards, if I get halfway there, I'll get five points. If I get the full thing, I'll get the other five points. 
So some of them make sense to call more of a of a drastic one to get more points because you'll still at least get something as a consolation prize if you you know end up failing ultimately. And then this is where you get the option to set focus players. These guys will earn more XP every week. And you can also do a mini game with them every week. So they can essentially get three times more XP than your average player because of it. Because they're going to get the practice rep like they normally would. They're going to get the bonus XP for being a focus player. And then they're also going to get more XP because you did the mini game with them. If you do not do the mini game with them, they will still get the bonus XP and of course the practice XP. And if, I, if you don't know what XP means, I'm sorry, I should have probably mentioned this earlier. It's just experience points. It's points you earn to upgrade your player and upgrade your coaching staff and th those kind of things. So when you hear the term XP, it just means that you're earning points to upgrade your player. But you can choose mini games and you'll actually get more options sometimes here, like coverage skeleton and all that. That wasn't even in the training camp version. But you just pick whichever one you want. When you get to the weekly strategy, you're never going to get an upgrade point like that for just getting gold. But you will get the opportunity, if you get gold, to have them increase their development trait. It's not very often that it happens, but it is something that happens. So choose wisely, work on these and try to get gold every time, as frustrating as it can be sometimes, to make sure that you are maximizing your development for your players. And I always make sure to do these every week. You can revamp a player in one season if you do this every week with them. I've, I've seen it done, I've done it myself on numerous occasions. You can have a player jump quite a bit in their overall just by doing weekly strategy regardless if they're playing or not now down to the manage staff tab this is where you'll well manage your staff your franchise staff your team schemes your formation subs and your auto subs so your franchise staff is going to consist of your head coach your offensive coordinator and your defensive coordinator as well as a player personnel tree if you click on view talent tree it's going to bring you to this screen and these are the things that you will unlock with your franchise points the ones that you earn from your weekly strategy. You also earn them just for other things as times as well. But for the most part, if you're not earning them through your weekly game plan goals, you're not gonna be earning them at all. So you wanna make sure that you're earning some points, choosing them wisely, and then you can use them to upgrade things like the first tree here for staff modification. This is gonna give you a discount when you're buying stuff for your offensive or defensive coordinator. Offensive development, this is going to give you XP increase gains for your tight ends, your wide receivers, you know, obviously everybody has their own thing, but it's just going to give you an ability to upgrade them faster than you would if you did not have it unlocked. Your offensive and defensive coordinator will have their own specialties, they are called. And if you look at the free agents area of them, you'll see that everyone has their own and you can just sort of design it around what you want to run. If you want to be an outside running team, then you would want outside running. There's inside running, there's quarterback uh, guru, there's receiver guru, as you can see here, there's halfback guru. So it you can really change it to what you want it to be. The only problem is you have a limited amount of coordinators that you can hire and you cannot change what they have. So you just have to take with what they have and just deal with it. And I'll show you what that looks like here. We're gonna fire Justin King and now we can go to hire them and that's gonna bring us to the free agent area. And now we can hire an offensive coordinator and he'll tell you right there what their specialties are. So this guy, Jamie Rodriguez has pocket passing, secure the line and halfback guru. You will also get a bonus for signing them to try and catch them back up to where you were so you don't completely lose out on all of your abilities. So you'll see here that Rodriguez gets 42 points for a hiring bonus. Uh, and it'll change depending like Justin King, who we just fired, well, we just fired him, so why would we get a bonus for hiring him again? So you won't get one for that, but anybody else, you will get a, a bonus for for hiring them that you can use right away to replace whatever it is that they had or they don't have. And you can also view their talent trees as well if you're curious to like, well, I, I'm happy that they have offensive line guru, but they decided to go for the power side and I'm trying to go for the run block finesse side and all that stuff, so maybe I have to change what I'm doing here, right? Like it's it's up to what you want but you can you can really look at all this and see what you want to have for your offensive or your defensive coordinators and know what you're getting before you get into it so pay attention to these kind of things because it is important down the line if you don't want to have somebody who chooses to give awareness to the halfbacks and instead gives it to the fullbacks then you don't want to choose somebody who already has the first option selected here because then it locks the other side you can see here you cannot choose boost run block finesse for right and left tackles anymore 
because this one was chosen first. So the side of the tree they choose is matter. So make sure you're paying attention. You also have a player personnel tree, and this is where you're gonna get any discounts for trading, recruiting, and that kind of a thing. So, so if you wanna have discounts on certain players or discounts on uh, draft picks or increases to your own you know, value of picks or players, this is where you will earn that here. Offensive recruitment, this is for the likelihood of them signing with you in free agency. It just essentially gives them a little bit of a boost. So maybe if they have a, a red bar of interest, maybe they have a yellow bar if you have it turned on here for this position. And same with defense. Your team schemes are gonna be important if you are playing CPU versus CPU. This will tell you what playbook you're running. This is where you can change the playbook that you're running and also the scheme that you're running out of that playbook. And it'll tell you the percentages of what your team fits with and what is good to run, what's not good to run. If you're looking to change things, you can, just know that you might have to make some adjustments to your roster to better fit their situation. And I mentioned this matters for CPU versus CPU. I do believe it. I have I swear I've seen it make a difference in how the defense or how the game is called and how the plays are run. Some people don't believe that it does affect it, but that's their own, you know, that's their opinion. I'm just telling you, if you're playing CPU versus CPU, I would highly recommend putting some time and effort into setting these properly and making your decisions with it. If you're using it just for user versus CPU, this does not matter at all. The only thing it could matter is that you will get an extra XP if you have scheme fits in your positions for your weekly training. So that's one reason, regardless of how you're playing, to make sure that this is matched up properly and you're bringing on good players to fit your scheme because you're just gonna progress them much faster. The next tab here is formation subs. For those of you who like to get a little extra with how your players are on the field, this is where you can make those adjustments. So I always do this. Like if I have receivers that I want certain to be in certain situations or certain route concepts, I'm gonna change it here. Essentially, you can just choose whichever playbook is set in your team schemes, this is gonna populate into this area. So right now we have the Vikings offensive playbook. So now I can change the formations for that particular playbook. If you change playbooks, it's going to reset them and you'll have to start over. So let's say I want in tight Y off, I don't want just, uh, Jordan Addison over on this side. I want Justin Jefferson here. I can go here. I can put in a dummy player for him for now and then go over to where I want him to be. And now he'll be available on that list. I can add him to it. And now I can go back over here. I can put Jordan Addison on this side. So now I have Justin Jefferson exactly where I want him in this particular formation. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I know if I want him here? Well, I use a couple of different uh, websites. There's huddle.gg and Madden School. I will link them down in the description below that I use to look at all of the plays that are listed in this game. And it'll tell me exactly what plays are in each situation. And then I can make that decision based off of where the red routes are in a, on a given play. Your red routes are gonna be your primary routes. So if I want Justin Jefferson in as many red routes as possible, because why wouldn't I? I can look at that then I can add them to this, the formations in the situation that provides the most red routes to him. And that's how I handle things. You know, you can do the same for a running back. Maybe you have a different running back that you want to get involved, but you don't have a lot of situations where you really want him in all the time. So you can change who your running back is for this given formation right here as well. And you can do the same on defense. Defense is a little tricky. I recommend not touching the corners. For whatever reason, when I touch the corners, it gets really weird and really wonky, and I don't like it. Anything on the front seven, so your defensive line or linebackers is fair game, and safeties are the same, but do not touch the corners. I don't know why, it's just weird. And then last but not least is auto subs. This is something that I don't think works. <laughs> if it does, it doesn't work very well, and it hasn't for years. But what this is supposed to do, and maybe when you're watching this, it does work, and I'll be very happy at that time, but what it's supposed to do is it decides when your players sub in or out of the game based off of their fatigue level. So if you have a running back that has run seven times straight and you see that they are panting and they are having a hard time in the backfield, you want them to sub out at that time. But right now the game sets them to not sub out until they only have 60% of their stamina and players for the most part start to get a little, you know, a little winded around, I would say 70% is when you'll notice a, a difference. So I always raise the out up a little bit, maybe 75, maybe 80, whatever you want to do. What that means is once they have ran a certain amount of plays and they do not have full stamina, 
and it's below whatever number you set, they are supposed to sub out of the game and the person behind them is supposed to come in. And then on the sub in is when they will come back to the game. Now it's by default has it set to 80. I like to put it up to like 85 or 90 because if I if they're sub back in, I want them to be available for the next few plays. I don't want them to keep going back and forth. So I like to set this one a little bit higher. You can do it based off a of position, however you feel, however you see fit. So this is one is important when it works. I just don't think it's working right now because I have been testing them and I just do not see that big of a difference. But if you are going to test them, I would recommend something like 90, 75, or maybe even 90, 80 to try and get players to actually sub out when they're supposed to. That brings us to the managed roster. There's a lot of stuff here, okay? We're not gonna go into grave detail with everything because some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Like NFL rosters, it just shows you the roster, right? <laughs> it's not a lot to go over here, but it does give you the option for the player card here so you can make all of these changes here. So you're gonna have the option of checking their goals viewing them in the depth chart. I'm not sure why this is an option. Just check, just click on the depth chart option if you want to see their depth chart. Stats and contracts, you want to just see this player's you know information with that. Set as a captain, you can do that if they are not set as one already. Add to trade block. If you want teams to offer you trades for this player, you can do that here. Trade away. Well, the pretty self-explanatory. It'll add them to a trade center trade for you and you can go from there. Release and of course, edit the player. Editing their, their gear, their face, their jersey number, their ratings, all that kind of stuff can be done under the edits player tab. There are also a lot of different options up here when you're looking. So ratings, this is gonna give you a brief summary of what their ratings are, both their primary and their secondary attributes. The traits will be listed on the left-hand side there. You know, leader, balanced quarterback style, ideal sense of pressure, that kind of a thing. Their health, it'll tell you their injury and stamina rating. And it also at the top there, tell you what their fatigue level is. If you have progressive fatigue on, this is when you wanna pay attention to because it will tell you if they are being affected by their fatigue when you have fatigue on again progressive fatigue has to be on for this bar to change but if it does change and you have it on you want to see like okay this guy is being affected overall wise by his fatigue maybe i need to sub him out or take a look at that when i go to manage practice reps this week to try and get that back up progression history will just tell you when they progress and what they gained xp from and then motivations tags tells you what they are motivated by so jj mccarthy here no income tax um we have taxes in minnesota apparently so he's not happy with that head coach history a winning percentage right now he's in the middle with that and then warm weather state well we're not in a warm weather state and this is what i was talking about with the motivation stuff so mccarthy is from illinois he played college football in michigan and he was drafted to minnesota where in the hell is he getting warm weather from? Where, what, what makes him need that as a motivation? Now, people can like warm weather, but generally that's for players. Like I, in my opinion, if you're gonna have warm weather state, it would be for guys that maybe are play, played in and are from Florida or Texas or something like that. So this is what I was talking about when sometimes the motivations don't really add up properly with the player that they're on. So choose how that affects them wisely in your setting screen. Your next option is Trade Center. This one has looked the same for pretty much probably 10 years. <laughs> and you have the option of Trade Block, which is just gonna show you all of the players that other teams have added to their Trade Block so that you know which players are more, are, are more likely to be moved to your team if you offer them a trade. Upgrade Position, I'm not sure what the point of this is. It, it really just, it does the same thing. Like watch what I, when I do this, Quarterback. It just shows me the quarterbacks and it, it's the same exact screen though if i would have just done the uh the trade finder so if you do trade finder it brings you to the screen here you can add up to six pieces and if you click on this it's gonna be, <laughs> give you the same screen so um not very helpful there so i would just ignore that one just use trade block and trade finder if you want to trade away a player but you don't know what you want to get for him or have an idea of who to trade him to just add them to this and then you can hit start or advance to get to this area and then just hit triangle or I don't know what it is on Xbox. I don't care. The top button on your four buttons and it'll give you trade offers from other teams and you can choose one. It'll automatically go through if you choose it from here. Sometimes the CPU gives you dumb trades. Sometimes they give you trades that are too good to be true. 
and that's up to you on how you want to handle that. If you want to take advantage of the CPU, this right here is a good spot to do it. Like this one, for instance. The Falcons decide they want to give up their 82 overall 23-year-old wide receiver, along with a third and a sixth round pick for 29-year-old Aaron Jones, after they have B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier, Tyler Algier on their roster. Now, does that make sense for a trade? Not at all. But if you want those kind of trades to be given to you, this is how you get it done. Add your player, hit triangle or Y or whatever it is to um, get this screen to pop up and then just go ahead and just choose whoever you want to, to get to your team. Free agents area. Anybody who's not on a team is going to be listed here and you'll be able to sign them from this area. You can change them to practice squad eligible so you can put them straight to your practice squad. Um, you can find players that are, are on practice squads. This will populate once week three is done in preseason and practice squads have been established by the CPU and you'll have the opportunity to poach them straight from there so you don't have to go through everybody's individual practice squad to find players that you're looking for. Depth chart, it shows you all of the players and how they're listed on your team for game day. If you are not familiar with how this stuff is set up, I would recommend that you watch my video on this channel. I believe it's in Madden 24's tips and tricks or my Madden 24 back to beginners guide, the depth chart guide. It still follows the same exact principles as that video did. And um, it, there is a few things to keep an eye out for when you're adjusting these things. So go and check that video out if you have not already. This is what the adjust lineup screen looks like. It sort of just, um, it's just a depth chart that's not as in depth, but with pictures. That's probably the best way I can put it. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the best way I can put it. You do have the ability for the, the, the CPU to decide your lineup. I wouldn't recommend that because I think you know your team better than the CPU does. But this is where, um, yeah, broke. It's a, it's a not as complex depth chart that doesn't give you as many options to change things around with pictures instead of just words. So if that's what you're looking for, there you go. Team salaries, this t this tab is very, very important. This page here is something that you need to pay attention to. This is going to tell you the financial health of your team. And there's a lot of numbers up top. A lot of numbers. I've done a video on this too, as you can imagine. It is also in my Back to the Basics video playlist on my channel here. I would recommend going to check it out because it will explain what all these numbers mean and what to look out for. I'm not going to go through that now. We'll be here for another half hour. And I don't think you guys want that. So this is where you can see what your players are costing you and when their contracts are going to be coming up and you can see what your cap space is like and all that sort of stuff. But again, if you're looking for a full explanation of how this stuff works, go and check out that video on my playlist. Resign players. This will automatically populate on your main menu page here where we're, we were originally clicking from once week three hits. But if you go in here, it'll show you everybody that is due for a new contract soon. It has not unlocked yet because they don't unlock until week three. But this is where you'll see the players that you have coming due on contract this year. And it'll also give you your upcoming cap there at the top there. It says we have 99 million. Improved team really doesn't do a whole lot. It just sort of gives you another way of looking at the trade block. Once in a while, they'll throw a free agent in there if there's actually a free agent available that would be suitable for your team. But it's not something that I really ever use. So, I mean, if you want to use it, it does look a little bit different and I guess a little bit nicer. So feel free. But for the most part, I just use the other stuff that I already mentioned. And then, of course, the last one being the injury report. If you have an injury, it's going to show here and you can check on the rest of the league to see if they have any injuries and what their situation is like. You can use this to check on your upcoming opponent to see are they going to have their players this week or who am I going up against? Manage team. This is for you know, those of you who are looking to either rebuild or relocate. So if you choose rebuild stadium, you get a selection of like six different stadiums you can choose from and then relocate. Of course, that would be relocating the team altogether. Uh, staff moves. This will populate there. Like, when you're on this main menu week to week, different things are going to populate depending on what's going on. So staff moves are going to be shown here once in a while. And it's just showing what we did, right? It populated because we I did that thing where I fired Justin King to show you the free agents area. So it will usually populate at the end of the season, like during the off season progression stuff. So that's where you'll normally see that. Of course, play preseason game is pretty self-explanatory. This is going to be where you choose to play the upcoming game on your schedule. And then of course, advance week, if it's, you know, if you're ready to move on to the next week. So what we're going to do though, is I explain all this stuff to you. I'm going to finish explaining the different tabs and then I'm going to take you through a whole season. So this is going to be a longer video. Well, it already is a long video. What am I thinking? I've been recording for 54 minutes already. Wow. Okay. I, I can't help it. I like to explain things too much. 
But this year in Madden, you have extra tabs here. As you can see, the first tab is gonna be what you're normally see you're used to seeing. You're gonna have your upcoming five games listed across the top, your current matchup, which team you're playing, the overalls and whatnot. It'll update, of course, throughout the season on what the actual records are. The next tab over is how you match up. So some of your top players, how your your stats for the team are listed throughout the league, like if you're top five, top six, you know, top 10, whatever. Third tab is gonna be a, a viewing of your conference only. I don't know why it's only the conference, but it is. So you can see the full conference of the team that you're in and what the standings are across all four of the divisions within that conference. And the last one is goals. So if you have different goals, you can see it here. There will be another one that populates when we get past one week of statistics. And I'll show you that when we advance. If you wanna see news about the stuff around the league, you can see it here. This is where the only thing of importance here is draft prospects. Sometimes you will hear about stories about the prospects coming up, like so-and-so is hurt all the time, yada, yada, or so-and-so balled out. And this will affect their draft stock and their positioning within the draft. And also it can affect their development trait and their overall, if they have a good or a bad story. And you know it'll affect them accordingly to their, what their story says. So you do wanna pay attention to this every week just to see if there's something new about a draft prospect that's coming up, especially if it's somebody that you're interested in. Cause you don't wanna to get to the point where if you see one about an injury, like, oh, this player's always injured or he got another injury. And then you draft me as like a 50 something injury rating. And you're like, what the heck? Well, you might've been able to avoid that if you found his story in this news tab throughout the season to, to trigger the fact that he, this guy is injury prone. The league, this is just gonna give you more stuff to look at for the whole league. So the standings, this is where you'll see more than just your conference. The schedule, you can view your own schedule and also the entire like week to week schedule. Stats and awards. This one has a lot of information in it. Your player stats here, the legacy board. I don't really ever pay attention to this, but if you want to, you can. If you click on it, it'll show you the legacy score. Don't ask me how you get legacy points outside of just winning Super Bowls and championships, but you can get them somehow. Um, team stats. So if you want to know where your team sits across the league with offensive yards, third down conversions, that kind of a stuff, you'll see it here. In season awards, this will unlock as the season goes on and then you'll have the options to view yearly awards towards the end of the season nfl records books career stats so this will be every season that a player that's in your franchise has had it's a good way to keep track of maybe like guys that have been drafted into your league and like 10 years down the line you want to see how they ended up finishing their career and coach stats i've never looked at this once probably never will but it's there league transactions this can be a very helpful tool for you you can see What's all happened in the in the league? And it has all sorts of options. It has signed, re-signed, franchise tag, traded, released, retired, position changed, player edit, practice squad, draft class edit, and contract restructured. So anytime a CPU team or you make a change in this roster when it, or in this file when it comes to the roster, it's gonna populate right here. And this is also where the retirements will show at the end of the season as well. So this is a good one to keep an eye on, especially if you're in a league. If you are not sure, maybe you don't trust some people in your league, you can come in here and you can say, oh, well, so-and-so, why did you edit this player or do this or that? Or if you, maybe you're in a league and you don't trust a commissioner and you see that he edited the draft, why did you do that? Because if you edit the draft, you can see everybody. You can see their overalls and everything. <laughs> it, it's a free look if you, if you really want to look at it. And then league history. This one was added a couple of years ago when people were complaining about not being able to keep track of their league. And this is what they gave us. And yes, this is the entirety of it. You just get the quick recap of the yearly award winners, who the Super Bowl winner was and who the uh, Super Bowl MVP was. That, that's it. But it does go all the way back. So like you can go all the way back and see in NFL history what happened. And then your options, of course, this is where you're gonna do like your franchise settings and changing your gameplay sliders and whatnot. If you wanna adjust gameplay sliders or XP sliders, there is a lot of information on Operation Sports. I always tell people to go and check that out because they do a lot of good things there. Your XP sliders are going to affect how much XP or progression that your players earn, okay? So if you want your players to earn more, you can adjust it here. Everything is always defaulted at 100. Um, you can also do that based off of their age, regardless of position. If you want a 20 year old to earn more progression, you can max that out here or move this up however you want and you can go around it. What I like to do is once I get to like 30, 31, 32, I, I crank down their progression. They don't need to be earning stuff anymore, depending on position, of course.
You can also do regression rates specifically for certain positions like halfbacks. We know that the halfbacks are usually hit harder. So if you want them to regress more, you'll move this up here. Same with def the defense and then also age regression. So if you want them to regress once they get to a certain age, you set that here. Again, there's a lot of information about this stuff out on Operation Sports. There's a few creators who have put their own stuff together for this. Look around, find what you think is gonna work best for you or just come up with your own as you go throughout it. Sometimes you gotta play a, a franchise, figure out what the situation is before you can make these final determinations. So however you'd like to see it, go ahead and do it. It can really change the outcomes of your franchise and how players are in the league. You can also adjust draft class strength. If you know in a given season that there are no quarterbacks in your league and you need more quarterbacks, you can turn this up to strong or very strong. Or if there's a year where it's like, dude, everybody has a quarterback, we don't need more. You can turn this to weak or very weak. And this will make sure that there's not a lot of prospects that are gonna muddy up the, uh, the positions in the rest of the franchise. Never demand release. As I stated earlier, the CPU does not know what it's doing when it comes to offering you new quarterback or new head coach options. Just don't do it. If you're looking to change teams, like maybe you have done all you can do with the team that you're on, but you don't wanna lose this franchise, you wanna start over on a different team, you can do that right here. If you click on retire, you can just go to create a new character and it'll let you transition over to whatever you wanna be. If you wanna be a brand new coach, take over an existing coach on a different team, it'll plop you right here where you left off. This coach, like if I do this right now, Kevin O'Connell will still be the coach here. It'll just take my profile and put it on somebody else's. So it's a good way to maybe keep the freshness of your league. If, you get, if you're getting sick of the team that you're on and you wanna change it up and maybe you really like the quarterback that so-and-so just drafted, you can go over there, become their coach, and now you're in charge of their team instead. All right, so we've reached the point where I've explained everything through all these little lists here, and now it's gonna start getting a little bit more quicker, okay? I promise this isn't gonna be a three-hour video, okay? I can't promise it won't be an hour and a half, but it's not gonna be three hours. Now it's time for us to start advancing, and I will pick up when new things pop up and show you what has to be done. All right, so I stopped here in week two because there are, were a couple of storylines, and these you're gonna see a lot more frequently now with Madden 25 than you did in Madden 24. You're gonna have a lot of different ones. You're gonna have ones about position battles, about weekly strategy, uh, about a few different things. So I'm gonna show you a couple of them. We're not gonna do all of them because we'll be here all day. And it's gonna sort of dictate what you need to do throughout the season in order to not get chastised in the media, essentially, which doesn't really do much to your team, but it can affect like morale and it can help with XP. So if you can do it, great. If not, you know, you're know you not gonna get the rewards for it. So try try to do them. If you don't wanna have to do them, just don't click on them. But the here first one is offensive coordinator meeting. And this one is going to be about a position battle. So then you're gonna go to the conference room and you're gonna ask or answer questions about something with a position battle. This one I think is gonna be about left ends because it always is. Yep. And it's going to give you the option of choosing if there's a, you know, position battle. If you click on this, always choose one, always. Because if you don't and say there's no battle, it'll give you a bunch of negative morale and your players will be minus one or minus two overall for like the entire season. And it's really stupid, but it happens every year. So if you don't want to deal with that, don't click on it. But just know if you do click on it, it's going to have you track that. So we chose most tackles for loss, which means that at the end of it, at the end of the season, or at the end of the preseason, the Jonathan Bullard is going to have to have the most tackles for loss in order to start. So I'll show you how that looks in a couple of weeks. First, let's go to the player meeting here as well. Players have a difference in their personality types, and you can change them once in a while if they trust you enough. Oh, this one's about Justin Jefferson. That my personality can be a problem sometimes. There may be some truth to that. These are really stupid, man. They're really repetitive. I know I'm obsessed with my brand and socials all of the time. Would you change that about me? I want him to be more of a leader, but I don't know if he's going to take that. So there, now he's a leader. And sometimes if you don't have a lot of, you know, um trust in your players i'm not sure how you earn the trust to be very honest with you it never really explained that they will change their personality type which can give them easier access to like 
re-signing with you. I'm not sure how much of an impact it really has, but it's just something that, you know, it, it does matter from time to time. So you want to make sure you're going through things properly and doing the things you need to do when you when you click on those scenarios. All right, so now that we have gotten to the end of the preseason, there is the finishing of the position battle and another sideline, practice sidelines, media interview. So what you want to do here is you want to go to your stats. We can also see here now that we've, we've seen stats. They're going to be right here after the conferences. It'll give you a quick snapshot of the top three of every statistical category, the main ones anyway, so that you know what's going on around the league. You want to go here and hit, well, you can just hit triangle or Y to view the full stats. And then you want to go to your defense. You want to figure out who led for tackles for loss. Okay, so we need to find our two. Okay, so we need to find our two left ends. So we see that Bullard had one. Well, and so did Jonah Williams. Okay. Um, so they might say that depending on who is supposed to be the starter, they'll tell you who they think it should be, right? And you can decide to accept it or not. Just know if you don't if you don't accept it, it's gonna really affect the morale of your players. So I would highly suggest just going along with what they say. And if you have to change something a week or two later, go ahead and do that. But now when we click on the update for the position battles, it's going to tell you preseason is over and it looks like our position battle is complete. Yes, it is. Based on what you said in the press conference, Bullard won the battle. Do you agree? Yes. And there you go. The team will appreciate you keeping your word. So Bullard earned three block shedding, finesse, and power moves for the next three games, and the entire team earned plus five morale. If you choose to ignore it or don't go with what they say, it's like negative 10 morale, and it really messes with your team badly. And then, of course, you get to the cut players screen now that we're at the end of preseason, and this one is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to go through your list. It'll tell you how many players you need to cut, and you just got to cut it down to the final 53, place the players you want on your practice squad, so on and so forth, and then you can move on to the regular season. Last thing before we get to the regular season is this practice sideline for the media. This is going to, I think this is going to ask about what your offense is. And these questions are really stupid and they put you in a corner. So if you're playing the game, this will probably be better for you than if you're doing CPU versus CPU. We talk all the time. Oh yeah, team's identity. This one is so weird. And now this is going to be about defense. Stopping the run, shut down the passing game, create turnovers and sacks. Let's just go shut down the passing game. We're going to shut down opposing QBs. Yeah, coaches really talk like that. What would a successful season look like? And then instead of having normal options, they have give up less than 200 yards passing per game. Yeah, that's going to happen. Less than 25 red zone. We'll just do that. It, it's just, I don't know. The questions are, are posed weirdly, and the goals that they give you to choose from don't really help all that much. They're not very easily attainable a lot of the time, and sometimes they're unrealistic. Like one of them is 15 interceptions or 12 interceptions between your top two corners. How often does that happen anymore for any team? Like it just, it doesn't make any sense. Your first week is always going to be filled with a lot of stuff to do. Some of it is important, some of it is not. Like your press conferences, you know, you don't have to do all this. Your star, oh, there's storylines for your starting halfback and starting wide receiver. Let's check those out. So starting halfback. The athletic trainer told me to ask you about what you want me to work on during camp. Should we focus more on injury prevention or improving my stamina so I don't wear over the, wear down over the season? Let's focus on injury prevention. Your players will focus on injury prevention with the trainer and his injury rating just increased by three. That was our very good to get. So make sure that you do these because when you have a chance to increase things like that, always it's a good thing. And now we have one for our starting wide receiver as well. So I'm assuming Justin Jefferson, yep. What should I focus on injury prevention or improving my stamina? Okay. Um, I think injury prevention is always the answer. Should always be. There we go. Another plus three. And we've seen the press conference ones and the media interviews. You know, do them as you like. Ignore them if you want. It doesn't affect anything if you ignore them. It just doesn't do them, right? So you don't have to click on them if you don't want to. But week one is important because you have to choose your draft class and set up your scouts. You cannot do this once you get to week three. So make sure... You make sure you do this on week one. This is very important. This is a big step for your drafting. So choose draft. If you want to keep the auto-generated class that it has, or if you have one downloaded or want to find one in the download center, you can do that from here as well. I always just keep the generated players because I don't know. I just, I'd rather have my own players and have my own type of world. I don't want to have somebody else's world. So I always go with this to each their own. And then what you want to do is go to scouts 
and you have to decide if you want to keep these guys or not. If you don't, you can fire them. Don't feel bad. They will not have any type of emotional reaction to it. But what you want to do is you want to find scouts that are going to match up with the regions that they're going to be in. Now, if you don't know this yet, if you're new to the game, you have a national, a west, central, northeast, and southeast scout that you can have. National means that every player out of that position group will be fully scouted if you choose at least uh, tier two or tier three. A tier one scout, I do not believe, no, the tier one scout will not unlock those players fully. So if you need to know their talent, you don't wanna choose this. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. First, we're gonna get through the scouting portion. So if you want to see the prospects through the region that they're in, you can just click on the view region prospects for each individual situation. And it'll show you the players in just that area. Of course, you can do this just from the normal scout players screen if you want, but this will show you what you have available in the West. And then you can find, okay, there's a couple of good receivers here, a couple of tight ends, not a lot for the offensive line, not a lot for defensive ends, a few middle linebackers. Oh, so a lot of round one to two guys for safeties. Maybe we want to go for safeties out of the West. So that tells you now that you can go back. You can go to your scouts here, manage scouts. And if you have fired everybody already, which you should do, you can go to free agent scouts and you can sign somebody that's a safety. Generally, what I like to do is if there's not a lot of players in that situation, uh, in that area, like for the West, there was like five safeties. I don't want to put a tier two or tier three there unless I desperately need safeties. But if I do, I'm probably going to be looking in a more bigger area. And what I mean by that is this is broken down very weirdly in Madden. It can differentiate from time to time, but a lot of the times you're going to find that the West and the central regions have very limited prospects, no matter the position. They just don't, I don't know why. It, in my mind, if we wanted to be realistic, you would probably have, you know, quarterbacks and, you know, whatever in the West, you'd have a lot of linemen and maybe linebackers in central, um, Northeast, Southeast. I mean, you can sort of go different ways with that, but you're gonna find that the West and central have very bad cho like choices when it comes to the abundance of players in those areas. And then the Northeast is usually like the third best or the second best. And then Southeast is usually the best, but sometimes it can be interchangeable between these two. What I'm trying to say is if you're in the West and you decide you want to do safeties, you know, you're only going to get five of them. You might not want to, you know, spend your, one of your good scouts there. So I would usually put a tier one here because tier one is going to earn the least amount of points or for percentage unlock on the players. So I would choose a, a tier West here. So I go manage scouts. I would go to the free agents. I would go to safeties here. So we'll get down to the safeties and then we'll decide from there. Now, if you remember when we were looking, safeties and wide receivers were strong there. Now you will get a, an additional little bit of a bump in your secondary position that they have by having them. So it's because I knew wide receiver was good there as well, along with safeties, I could choose George Koslow or Koslow. And now when I set him to West, I know that I'm going to get a tier one, you know, focus on the safeties, but I'll also get a little bit of a boost to the wide receivers. I also did a full breakdown of this too, by the way, which is in my Madden 25 playlist or tips. Go and check that out. It'll explain exactly where all the points come from and what you get from them, which will help you understand this process a little bit more, but there's a lot to go over. So I don't want to go over too much in this video particularly. But go and check that video out. I guarantee you, you will become a scouting and draft wizard if you watch that and follow along. And then you just go through the list and you choose the different ones that you want to do. National, always do tier three or tier two. And then I choose one area that usually has like the most players that I want to get and I'll do the other one. Tier two and tier three will fully unlock the talents of these players. And this is what you'll follow along the whole season. Their scouting percentage will start at zero. It'll gradually increase throughout the year. All players, even if you don't scout them, will get to 60%. And then as you scout them, you'll get more than that. So scout, I think tier one gets to like 70% or 75 or something like that, which is not enough to fully unlock them because they have to be at 80 to unlock fully. Your tier, your tier two, I believe, gets them to 90 and tier three gets them to, to like 95 or 100. So as long as you're at 90% on a player, you'll be able to unlock their their talent here and you'll know if they're worth the pick 
when you're when you see them on the board during the draft and then as the scouting percentage goes up more of their abilities will unlock here and it'll first give you ranges so once you get to like 20 percent, everything will be like a three or like a to c range for their grade or c to f or b to d or something like that and once you progress through the season you'll start to unlock more of them where then once a certain percentage is unlocked now instead of a to c it's a to b or b to c it, it just lowers that window of miscalculation down until you have a, a unlocked enough to get just one letter grade and you will get ra random letter grades even if you don't have them fully unlocked it just won't be all of them maybe you'll have four or five of them with just a single letter grade like a or c or something and it's not always going to be in a great position either it's not always going to be the same exact thing it's not going to give you all the good ones and will give you a random one sometimes so but you'll learn more from that as you go through things and again check out that video that i did on the madden 25 tips video about where all the points come from and when you get them and so on and so forth but the very key thing is setting them up this week so you want to make sure that you assign them to each area and have them ready because in week three you have to de designate what they're going to scout and if you don't have them set up you won't be able to change it and then you'll miss out on bonuses that you get for having you know guys scouting quarterbacks that are experts in quarterbacks if you don't have an expertise in that position they don't get all the extra bonus and you won't unlock them so you want to make sure that you have them lined up to what you're looking to draft uh, and then once you have player upgrades available you'll start seeing this pop up upgrade players and this is going to take you to a list that just shows you all the players that currently have an upgrade to be given and if you choose um the player it'll show you the three or four different archetypes they have to choose from and then you can look at their ratings if you want to see okay well this guy definitely needs man coverage so I think what we're going to do is we're going to do man to man for him to try and get that up a little bit. And then you can see what they got. They got two to man. So there we go. We got a little bit of an increase there. And you just go on down the list week to week until you're all done. If you want to do this automatically and you don't want to go through every individual player, you can just hit triangle or Y and it'll auto upgrade every single player. But again, that's just going to go off of like their highest overall. So it's not going to help if you're trying to get them to a scheme fit. So. If you're trying to get particular players to a scheme fit, make sure you go through and do them first, and then you can just you know auto sim the rest of them. And then from here, it's pretty much all the same stuff that we already looked at. So I'm gonna go ahead and simulate to week three and we'll show you the process of setting up your scouts. All right, so now we made it to week three. And this is where you choose your regional focus scouting. So it's gonna be everything except your national scout. I didn't finish going through them all. So like, I'm really not too concerned with this. It probably just auto you know assign people, but that's okay because I just wanted to show you the process. I'm not actually doing this for myself. So we know we assigned somebody in the West, we did safety. So all you have to do is go to set focus scouting, choose the position, hit okay. And then you'll see this success screen pop up and then you know that they are set there. And you'll do that for each individual position. National gets set in week eight. So you don't have to worry about that right now. You just still have to make sure that your scout is set up for national. You just cannot assign them until week eight. You will also get this pop up in week three, which is players ready to negotiate. And this is that re-sign tab that I mentioned earlier in the video. It's just gonna populate on your front screen so you don't have to click through the screens to see it. And you'll start to see players unlock for ready to negotiate with you. Some of them do hold out, but they've done a better job of that lately where they just put everybody available right away. They used to do it like one is in week three and others in week seven and all that. So just follow along and if you want to negotiate with them you just hit start negotiations and then you can choose between a, a variety of preset contracts or you can also edit your own down here if you want to and now the thing to pay attention to here is their interest in you you can see here that aaron jones has literally no interest in signing with us you can barely even see the little red sliver down there on interest level what that means is if you even want a chance at signing them, you're going to have to go to like player friendly or very player friendly. But as you can look at the breakdown, very player friendly is pretty much 10 mil a year on average. And then neutral is eight and a half, nine on average. So you'll save yourself money by being able to sign people to neutral um, contracts. And you'll also notice that player friendly increases the length of the contracts. So you'll have to make decisions. Like, do you want to try and sign Aaron Jones, who is 29, gonna be 30, to a five-year extension? I would not do that if I were you. So maybe you are okay with a three-year extension, or maybe you wanna do a two-year extension, but you wanna pay them more. So maybe you increase this to where they're making, I don't know, 12 mil a year or whatever. And then you can offer them this. Now, this can be very difficult to get them to agree upon, but if you pay them enough money usually, especially in the bonus area, they'll they'll just look past their interest. So you can see that 
he's looking for a better fit, but he'll consider this, which means you have to give him more money. And you just go along through it. And if you find somebody like Byron Murphy here, who's got a lot of interest in re-signing, you can get away with a neutral risk without really doing too much extra. Like I guarantee if I click this offer, which is going to save me, you know, quite a bit of money, about 2 million a year on average, I'll probably get to sign, which I do. So the more interest, the easier it's going to be to re-sign, the less interest, the harder and more expensive it will be to re-sign them. And you have to make that decision as if it's worth it for that player to come back. And this is where I do like the motivations having some impact, because if you don't have it on here, you can just re-sign players at will. And then what is the point of trying to, you know, make decisions? You know, I, I like having to have, you know, like if I really like Cam Bynum, but if he doesn't want to resign here, that really sucks. I have to repivot my whole idea of safeties. Maybe I have to adjust my draft strategy. And next thing you know, it's changed three or four steps for me for the next two seasons. And it just adds to that realism that you can actually try to find in Madden. Is it always perfect? No, it's not, but it's something that we have. And so I always encourage people to sort of interact with it. Try to use it to your advantage. Try to help you, your own you know, storylines like, Though the Vikings ended up losing out on re-signing Sam Darnold. So now they, instead of, you know, drafting a lineman, they really need to focus on quarterbacks, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I like that kind of stuff. So I, I always do it and I'll try to intertwine it into my own little stories when I can. And then once you get to week eight is when you can start doing your national scouting. So you're going to get here, choose national focus position. And of course, you're just going to stay on national. You're going to set your focusing. It says defensive end is a good one. So why, why not? We'll just do defensive ends then and call it a day. But now you'll notice when you go to the prospects that you have 20, 30% on some, maybe a little bit more on others, maybe a little less on others. And this will just, you know, continue to tell you the, the certain positions that they have. And if you click on one, like let's click on Jimmy McClellan here, you can start to see his information. You can see his physicals here to know this is going to be like, you know, speed, his strength, jumping, agility it's going to tell you there are certain physicals because those aren't going to show in skills this is core attributes so this is going to be what's particular to their position and you'll start to see like we have a and c unlocked for him we don't have anything else yet but eventually all of these will be unlocked and if they're not a single grade there will be a range of a grade once in a while you'll get a breakout scenario we got this one in week 11 sometimes they'll happen early sometimes they'll happen often sometimes they just don't happen so if you get them, make sure you click on them because they are important to the progression of your players. So we're going to show what this looks like here. And this will essentially happen after a big game from a player. So Ivan Pace Jr. must have had a pretty big week or something. And now you can choose a new goal or give this one five tackles and an interception. Or you can choose a new goal and let's do something different with them. What are you expecting? Let's do two tackles for loss. And now if he meets that, you should be able to get an upgrade in their development from him. And you'll see there, get two plus tackles for loss to upgrade his development trait. And these are very, very good to get. So if you get them, like I said, make sure that you are selecting them and you are trying to get them as much as possible. It is a little bit harder to do in CPU play because you know, you're at the will of what the game is going to do, but it just makes them that much sweeter if you do get them. And also one thing in week six and week 11, week six is the first one, week 11 is the second one, and they'll unlock throughout more throughout the season, but you'll get the mock draft. And this will show you where the teams are currently sitting. Oh, wow, we're picking third overall. We suck. Okay, but anyway, it'll show you who is gonna be selected. And Madden claims that they fixed this, but they did not. This pretty much just tells you the draft. <laughs> like, it, you're gonna know. You, are, you will know if a player is going to be selected before you like i can almost guarantee with 100 percent certainty that these are if the draft was today that schwartz would go one and barnes would go two and then i would have the ability to draft anybody else it gives you a pretty much blueprint of where you need to be in the first round if you want to land a certain prospect and it'll change and update as the season goes on so if you look here you can see that the broncos at one point were the number one team and the giants were number two and now the Broncos aren't even in the top five, so they must have went on a winning streak in the last few weeks. But the Giants have still sucked, and now they are number one. And it'll upgrade all the way to Mock Draft 5, which is in the offseason. And that'll give you, that's the one you want to look at to know exactly where you need to be to select the player that you want. It will change based off of the, the team selecting, right? It won't just go with the best player. Like Adam Schwartz was number one, but if you go back here, he wasn't actually going to go until us at three. 
So it will update throughout the year. Make sure you're paying attention to it and use it to your advantage to know who you need to get and where you need to be in the draft to get the player that you want. And now after the, the buy or after you sim, it'll give you the breakout and it'll tell you whether or not they met it or not. I don't know if he met it. I didn't play the game. So we'll just see what happens. Oftentimes it's on defense. It's more about playing together as a team to do things well. He didn't hit it essentially is what they're saying here. So he didn't get the two tackles for loss. He did earn some XP, but he did not get the development trait increase, which that will happen. If he got it, he would immediately have it available for week 12. And that is just something again to pay attention to. You want to click on them. If you click on them once, you click on them twice in order for it to take effect. I don't think it'll take effect if you don't click on it again. So make sure if you start the breakout, you click on the follow up breakout. And now the next important one is week 13. This is where you get to choose three focus players. You'll get another opportunity in the off season, the last week before the draft to choose uh, another three players. I think that one is called uh, private workouts. It does the same thing. What you can do is you can choose three players to get a huge boost to. I think this one is 30% and the other one is 40% or something like that. But in this, in this Madden and how it works is it essentially guarantees you will unlock the talent of that player without having to scout them with your scouts in their regions. So what I'll do is if I have a good chunk of, of a position that I really want, but I don't want to spend a scout there, I can just choose the players from that position group that I want to upgrade, and now I'll, I'll know what I need to know about them. So for instance, we didn't do anything on halfbacks, right? You can see they're all at 40%, but maybe there was a few guys that I really liked from the halfbacks that I could consider drafting if I know what their talent is, and I will be able to find that talent out by doing this. It will not unlock immediately because they have not earned all of the, the regular scouting points yet, but by the end of the season, you will have the full talent unlock for the players that you chose for this, this focus scouting. And we'll, for this example, we're just gonna go right down the list. We'll do Robertson, Williams, and Bonner. And those are our three. Once you have that, you have to click R3 or click down on your right joystick and it'll pop this screen up, just hit yes. And now you can check back later on to see the progress. How this one works is in week 14, the first one you chose will unlock, week 15 will be the second, and week 16 will be the third. The one at the end of the season, it just unlocks all three right away. Don't ask me why they did it that way, it's just the way it is. But now, once we're past this, there really isn't anything else else to worry about for the rest of the season in terms of extra stuff to do outside of just your weekly stuff with your team and of course playing the games. At the end of the season, once you get to the playoffs, this is where that early season report thing will come into play. So if you met your goal, this is where you'll get your reward for that. And if you didn't, well, you didn't. If you wanna click on it, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But if you're looking for the reward and you know you got it, you wanna make sure you click on it. Outside of that, it's just, you know, take care of the playoffs. And if you win, the, win it all, great. If not, well, then we're just going to the off season. Once you get to the end of the season or the Super Bowl week, you'll be able to view the yearly awards and see who won what. And it's usually the same, you know, suspects that you would expect to see. But you can see the things for the individual conferences and see if maybe any of your players won offensive player or rookie of the year or something along those lines to see if you're going to get anything cool out of it, you know, and they will earn XP for earning this stuff. So you do want to aim for this. They'll get a big jump in their XP. Sometimes they'll even get a development trade increase between this and their play on the field for their statistics. But outside of that, that's really the only thing to do in Super Bowl week unless you're of course playing the game. Once you get to staff week, this is where any staff moves will be shown here on this tab. And if your staff was, sometimes it can happen. I haven't seen it happen very often, but your staff can get poached from other teams. So always just check your franchise staff to make sure you have the offensive and defensive coordinator, which we still do. You can spend your points here throughout the season. Don't just save them up like I do. I just sometimes forget about it. And also for the sake of the video, it really wasn't important. So I just, I didn't worry about it at all, but you will want to check the staff moves. You can see which coaches got fired. So as I mentioned, everybody gets fired <laughs> usually. So you can see that uh, the Bears fired Matt Eberfluss. Um, the Bengals moved on from a couple of player or a couple of coordinators. Um, Ryan Dabble was fired. Okay, so not as bad as I thought. Maybe they did make a little bit of an adjustment to it so it wasn't so many. Because I would see like six or seven coaches get fired every year. But this year, there's only two. So maybe that's a sign that they did change things and you can actually have CPU firing back on again. 
You'll also get to see the retirement. So if any player's retired, it'll take you to the transactions screen and it'll just put it to the retired section and you can see all of the players that have decided to retire and take a look around the league, see if any of your players retired, so on and so forth. Then you have the re-sign week, and this is the last opportunity that you will have to sign any of the players that you want to re-sign. If you do not sign them here, they're gonna to go to free agency. And for the most part, you can still offer them a contract in free agency if you want to. Some of them will refuse to, at least they have in the past. But you can also, if say a player decided not to sign with you, like let's say Aaron Jones, who I know is not gonna accept this offer. Oh. Okay, well, <laughs> I should also point out that this is also the time that regression happens, which I just realized because he was like an 80 overall. And one thing that Madden used to have that they don't have anymore is a regressions tab. Um, and so essentially you just have to go through your own roster to figure out what happened. So you can see Aaron Jones dropped from an 88 overall down to a 79. And that's why he's, he gave, he took that option. So don't just blindly accept or ask for things like I just did for this video, because I definitely would not have paid him 12 million a year now at a 79 overall. But since it doesn't matter for this video, it doesn't really matter at all for the franchise. This is just a random one I created. But you wanna look through and find out what happened. So if you click on a player that you notice is not the same overall and go to their progression history, it'll show you what happened to them. So development trait was decreased down to star and it'll give you a list of what all changed. So they're carrying, they lost one, two to injury, four to awareness, so on and so forth and it'll show you exactly where those attributes were taken from now this happens with certain players more frequently than others halfbacks wide receivers corners you know more positions that require a lot more physical type of demand they are going to lose faster than say a quarterback would quarterbacks usually just maybe they'll regress a few points but for the most part they don't really change a whole lot until like their mid 30s same with linemen. Linemen can usually last a good amount of time. I would say like 32 to 34 is when the window sort of opens for them to really start regressing. Uh, same for the D-line. Depending on what I think their overall is, like if they're speed rushers, I think they will they will like regress quicker than if they're like a run stopper. But it's just something you have to go through and figure out yourself because again, the game decides not to tell you exactly what they have taken away. I really hope that they change that and I wish that somebody at EA would see this part because I don't think they really understand how awesome that regression tab was for us franchise users. You could click into this list and you could see exactly just almost like the resign tab looked like what your resign players screen looks like, except it was for regression. And it would tell you exactly what their changes were right from there you didn't have to search through every roster and you could cycle through all the teams and see what happened to other teams it was such a nice and good feature and i don't know why they took it away so if somehow some way somebody from ea is seeing this clip right now for the love of god please give it back to us okay we miss it all right sorry i just had to put that in there also what i was trying to show you before is this is where your fifth year options are going to pop up so if you want to accept the fifth year option it no longer populates in the main menu anymore it's in this screen so you have to go through and find them like lewisine for instance fifth year option and you can decide to accept or reject this option of course with him i'm going to reject it and he will now be up for re-signing next season and also if a player let's say decides not to re-sign with you like let's say brandon powell here I'm just going to do like a really bad deal so he doesn't take it. Yeah. You will now get the option of franchise tagging them. Of course, this should be only be done on very high overall players, and you should try to avoid it at all costs because as you can see, it's a very hefty price tag. It takes the average contract of like the top five players of that position, and that's what you have to pay them for the year. So Brandon Powell would have to make $28.5 million this season if I wanted to franchise tag him. So be very selective with that and do not use it every year unless you absolutely have to. And now we are in free agency. And when we talked about the settings way early in the season, we talked about the stages of it. And I'm gonna show you how that looks now. Also, if you are looking to find out what your team looks like, I would. this is a good spot to look at a just lineup because if players regressed in their development or gained a development trait increase, it will show you here that their background is different, right? So this orangish background means normal, silver means their star, 
Gold means superstar and red means X factor. Obviously red is the best, gold is the second best, so on and so forth. And you can just track to see if people change here. I don't know off, well, I know Byron Murphy was a star. So this shows me that he lost his star development and he does not have that anymore. So that is something that is sort of sucks, but it's just the way the world works. I really wish there was a tab that would show just every single development trait change. But, you know, you, those are things that we'd have to hopefully see EA decide to put into this game. You can also start seeing different things like the combine results. And what that looks like is if you go to the college players section and go to the prospects, the, now we can look at these halfbacks and you can see that I have all of them unlocked now. So now I can see that these three running backs are all worthy of being drafted ahead of where their projection is. Of course, it'll also tell you if they're not worth it as well. We just so happen to choose three players that are definitely worth their projection in the draft. But if you click on one of them, you will now see under physicals that they have numbers here listed for the combine. And you can see where they rank among their class. And then you'll get another one for pro day in a couple of, in one advance. And now you can see that the ratings on the left side have now gone from like good to elite or great to elite or whatever, down to a single rating. But now you know that he has elite acceleration. It's not a wonder. And same with the skills. We've gotten so far that we have a lot of them completely unlocked now for just the single grade. And the rest that are there are just a single one to two option. It's not a three stretch. It's B or C. It's A or B. It's C or D. So now you have a much more precise picture of what this player is going to look like if you draft them. You can also see here from their plus minus if they have gone up or down in their position rankings. So you have an idea if there was a, you know, something changed with them during the season. Um, you can also like sort by this. This is a good feature that they added this year where you can sort like, I really want a running back with really good ball carrier vision. So I'm gonna sort by this to see who all has A's. So I know that if I draft a guy, he's gonna be the best for ball carry vision in this draft class or one of the best. You can also do attributes, physicals, and then combine or pro day results as its own sort of selection. So if you wanna track guys across multiple different avenues, that's how you can do it here. You can also add a favorites list, which can be useful, but it's it sort of isn't always the best because you can't adjust it. So like if you go set favorite here, set him, set him, you can just tap to your favorites and it'll show you the guys that you've added to your favorites list here, just so that's more of a concise list. You know, the only problem is you cannot sort them, which is really irritating. Like I can't change the rankings of them. You used to be able to do that, you can't anymore. So you just have to sort of just deal with it. And now onto the free agency aspect. Once you get done with everything, you go to the free agents, you can see who is available to sign. I do like this screen because it gives you a good idea of who's interested in, you can sort by it as well. So I can see that Draymond Jones likes us, Michael Carter the second likes us, you know, but if I wanted like the best guy in the draft, which is Jeremiah Owusu Koroma, I know I said that wrong, Koromoa, um, you can see he has no interest in coming here. Now, it doesn't stop you from signing them, but if you look in the top right under Market Watch, it's gonna show you the team's interested. He already has 10 offers. And what are the chances of all 10 of those teams having this small of an interest bar? Which means if we wanted to sign him, we would have to overpay like hell for him and still probably not even have a chance at him. Like, look at this. Look at the size of this contract. 180 million, and when I offer it to him, oh, we actually got the top offer. Okay, so apparently teams don't like to offer great contracts right away. So we could actually still potentially land him. Who knows? So what you're going to do is you go through this list and you can see at the top left under active negotiations that we have a one of five now because we offered one contract. This is where you're in the stages come into play from the settings menu. You can only do five right now. You can change it to 10. You can bring it down to three. You can make it unlimited, whatever you want. And then they have what's called an eval period or an evaluation period. What this means is you can stay in stage one but make the players make a decision on their on their choices right now. And you can do that three times per stage. And it's essentially just gives you extra chances at landing a player. So for instance, if I only want this guy and I really want to see if he's in a sign with my team, I can then press L3 or down on my left analog stick and force them to make a decision. This will pop up. Players have evaluated and submitted their offers. And you can see he has not made a choice on on our, um, on our offer. He's still taking in offers and I can do it again. 
he has signed with us. Look at that. He decided to go with us. So now he is our player. And now you can go over to available. If you don't want to see players that have already been signed, you can go to targets here. This is guys you have active offers out on the table to. And then my signings, this is obviously players that you have signed. And then if you just want to see all the players signed, you can go here to sign and see who has all signed where in the rest of the league. So you can do the eval period three times there, like you saw. And then you also have three waves of free agency. So you can really make it nine ways if you want to, uh, if you have enough stuff that you're trying to do. Each year is gonna change. Sometimes you might not be going after too many free agents. Sometimes it might just be one or two main guys. Other times you might be trying to rebuild your whole team. If I was actually focused on this particular offseason, I would be rebuilding this whole team because I didn't sign anybody. So we have like, yeah, 45 players on our roster. I lost a lot of players. This is really just a re rinse and repeat type of situation until you're done with free agency. So I'm gonna get us to the end of free agency now. If there's more retirements at this point, it will give you another tab here, as you can see. Mock Draft 5, the final one unlocks, is the second stage of free agency. Everything else is still the same. Just wanted to make that apparent for you guys that are watching. Once you get to the recap screen, this is where you'll be able to just see what's all happened. If you wanna go back and look and see who was all signed. But this is also where the private workouts come into play. And again, this is where you get three players to choose from that you will get a full unlock of talent on. So looking through the positions, we know we don't have a lot of stuff unlocked for quarterbacks if we wanted to look there. We have a few running backs chosen. If we wanted to add more to that list, we could. Or we could also add to a position we didn't get a chance to fully scout, like wide receivers. Like maybe we're interested in a few guys. We do have a top five pick. Maybe we want to just do the top five players so that we know what we can expect from the players in the top five of the draft because that's where we're picking. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm select Andrew Barnes. We'll do Quincy Banks. Um, we'll do Jimmy McClellan because why not? We have our three guys now that we'll know. So we'll know quite a bit about the top part of the draft class here. So now I can just click the right trigger or right analog stick again. Boom. And now once I simulate to draft week, I will be able to see what their situation is. So once I hit next, you will not go straight to the draft. You will go to this screen here. You can scout the players again. And now you'll see when I go to the prospects area, I have full unlock of those three guys. So we know Andrew Barnes is a top five talent. We know Quincy Banks is a top five talent, but now we know that Jimmy McClellan is not worth a top five pick. His projection is top five, but he's rounds one to two. So we wouldn't want to take him until later in the first round or potentially top of the second round. So this is why this is very important because what if I really needed a D tackle and I was gonna take one right now? It wouldn't have been a good decision. This is also where I will check on the final mock draft so that I know what to expect. And look at that, we are the number one team. We really suck. So it doesn't matter. We know we can pick whoever we want, but what we can also do is look through this list and have like a 90% accuracy of what will be available to us in the second round because this just tells you the players that are gonna be taken essentially. So use this as much as possible because it does help quite a bit. And with that, now we can go to the draft. And now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna do the draft very little bit, not a lot, not full detail, but I'm just gonna run through the draft so that you guys know what it looks like, know what to expect, where to go with things. And then I'll show you the end of it before we end the video. So let's go ahead and let's start this draft. I didn't really need to see the, the animation or the little you know, motion picture thing or whatever. I went ahead and I just paused the draft. I don't like having the draft clock run. I'd rather just have it pause and just advance on my own terms. But when you get to the screen, you're gonna have an option for trade away if it's your pick, usually. You can also still go to manage roster and manage staff to make adjustments. So you can, if you wanna make a trade with a player or with a team to move up in the draft, or maybe you wanna trade a player away because you just saw that there's a player available and you're like, holy crap, I really want that guy, but I don't need him. You can make a trade to make it make sense to regain some more draft capital. Once you're here, you can make your selection. This will bring you to the screen to choose a player, skip ahead, well, skipping ahead of the draft. If you click on trade away pick, it's gonna give you different offers from the computer. And you can, if you wanna trade down, you can do that. You can make that determination if it's something that you really want to do. Like, look at this, the Raiders willing to give us their, their second round pick or their first pick which is this next pick. And on top of that, we can get a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh round pick just by making this trade with them. And honestly, I probably will take that. 
I probably will. I don't know who the Raiders think they're going to go get. It might be one of the defensive ends, but we know we have options at the corner position and the wide receiver position. Both of them are top five talents. So I know I'm going to get one and I'm going to get a bunch of, you know, draft capital in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and take this offer. I'm going to let the Raiders take my pick for this one. And now I just got a ton of draft capital for moving down one spot. I'm going to skip to the next pick. And they took Wilkerson, who was a quarterback. And if it's one of this, you know, higher draft picks, you're going to get this walkthrough, walkout animation. It's really loud in my ear. And it's really repetitive. And it just, you know, does the little walkout thing. And then it'll pop up their screen to show you what kind of a player they are and what they ended up being. If you are making the choice, if it's not you, it'll just go back to the screen like this. And now we can go, go, go on with. Do we want to try to trade away again? Do we want to make a selection? I'm going to make a selection here because I do want to land one of these top guys. And I'm thinking I want to land Andrew Barnes. I mean, this guy looks like a freak. Let's see his view, his player card here. I didn't even look at these guys, so I don't know what I'm picking. So he looks pretty good, right? A lot of A's. But maybe we want a corner, which we actually do need more of a corner. So maybe we want to go Quincy Banks here. We know he's good. So let's go ahead and let's take Quincy Banks. 5'10", 188 corner. We'll draft him. And now we get our walkout animation. And at the end of it, it gives you this here. It'll give you an understanding of where they were in the overall section. Like he's the number one talent. We got him at number two. It shows you their scouting report. Gives you consistently shows high level instincts, instinctive zone defender. Does he have NFL speed? So we know his speed might not be the best. And then you can see his profile here. I would say 94 speed is pretty darn good. So I think he does have the speed. And you see that he's hidden development as well. So now we know he's going to be at least star development. And then you can see what the skills were, of course, which you already probably knew if you drafted him. But this is what it looks like when you make a draft choice. And then from here, it's just going through the motions. If you want to keep going and, you know, picking players, just go ahead and do that. I don't have a need to do that. So what I'm going to do is just go down here. If you don't want to see the CPU picks, you can just go to advance the next user pick like this, and it'll just pop you right to the next pick. So we have pick two. Um, let's see. Is there anybody available here that I really want? Let's see. I'm just going to look at here. We know that Shelton Baber is available, um, a defensive end. He is worth this area of a pick. But we also know that we have this running back here, Rashad Williams, who's a top five talent. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take him. Boom. And now Rashad Williams ends up being number five in true talent. We got him at 33. So that's definitely a great pick. He's hidden development. He's got good statistics. And we didn't even know a lot about him, but it doesn't matter. We know we have a top five pick. And once I'm done, I'm just going to go ahead and advance to end of draft because I don't care about the rest of it. And now once you get to the end of this is where you're going to see what your overalls are. You do not see that in the draft. I guess it's to try to enforce the fact that you don't automatically take a new player just because you saw an overall because that's not realistic. But once you're done, it'll take you to this screen here. And now you're essentially back in preseason, except for there's this one week before you get to week one of preseason and you can see your draft recap. And this is where you'll see all of the players that were drafted. OK, so Quincy Banks was an 81 overall. Rashad Williams was a 77. Lance Brown ended up being a 71. And you just go down the list and sort of see what everybody ended up being. You can look at the rest of the teams or look at the full NFL picture to see where players were. So Andrew Barnes at wide receiver was an 80 overall. He would have been a good choice. I like to do this to see who was the best player. And look at that. We got the best player. There was another one that was an 80, which was Carlos Trent. He went 18th overall to the Bills. Nice pick. So I love this screen. I love looking at this screen and just figuring things out and seeing what other teams have gone for. Like you can go to like round four. And okay, who was the best player? Oh, Danny Bar Barrett was definitely the best player. 75 overall halfback in the fourth round. You can't complain about that. 73 overall, okay. And even a 71 overall in the seventh, Rashad Henry. Nice. So you just go through the list. You can see everything you want to see. You can also see what the salaries are going to be and their bonuses and all that stuff. And really that is the last part of the draft. Once you simulate past this week, you are just back in preseason week one, like we are here. You have training camp again. And now if you go to free agents, 
you can see that anybody that was not um, drafted outright will be here. So you can see like Joshua Atkins here, rookie, 62 overall quarterback. So if you're any undrafted free agents that you want to get, you can get them now. The unfortunate part is the CPU does get first dibs on them because all of their signing and stuff takes place when you when you advance during the advance period. So you essentially need to draft players if you want to guarantee you get them in the draft. Otherwise, you just have to hope that they don't get signed by another CPU team during the advance cycle for your undrafted free agents. And that brings us to the end of the video, guys. I just like doing these because I understand that there is a bigger increase. Like there's a lot of people from like different parts of the world that are maybe starting to get into football. Maybe there are people within, you know, you know, the United States and North America where football is played and it's, it's known that maybe just never got into the game or maybe they never got into the sport that are just getting into it. And I remember when I first got NBA 2K, and I, I like basketball, but I never played the game before. And I really wanted to do a, uh, a, you know, a franchise there. I was so overwhelmed because I just didn't know what anything was. And I don't want that for you guys. I want you guys to be able to enjoy this game and to know what to do and to how to handle things. So I hope that this video helps you guys out, whether you're a beginner or hell, maybe you're even you're a veteran and you just picked up a thing or two that you didn't think of ahead of time or on your own, whatever. I just hope that it helped you guys out. If it did, I'd really appreciate if you leave a like on this video. It helps out tremendously. Subscribing. I'm going to be doing more of this kind of stuff throughout the year. I do plan on going through other aspects of the game to do videos on that, um, including updates from older Maddens that I did that I just, they're just not in the search pool anymore because it's just not something that's very searched anymore. And um, of course, I'll be doing my franchise stuff and other things throughout the year. So, so if this was helpful or if you were entertained by this and you want to see more, subscribe down below hit that bell notification as well so you know when this stuff goes out and i will see you guys next time